In this video, I'll be doing five questions in symbolization, and these are former test questions that should increase in difficulty. Exactly one of Tyson and Chandler like cheese. The only real trick here to know is how to symbolize exactly one. So exactly one means one or the other, but not both, and you can literally symbolize it like that. So we could say uh, P or Q, but now I would want to say, and it's not the case that both of them like cheese. An alternative way to symbolize this is to just stipulate the cases. This is sort of a popular way of doing it. You can say Tyson likes cheese and Chandler doesn't, or it's the case that uh, Chandler likes cheese and Tyson doesn't. So either of these is perfectly acceptable with variants where you sort of switch things around. That's totally fine. Notwithstanding the fact that not both Sam and Tim can attend the meeting, Sam only shows up if it isn't raining out. Here we have several sort of key indicators that you want to highlight. So this first is the weird notwithstanding the fact uh, clause. Well, what does this mean? I've said this in some other videos, but whenever you actually have some sort of strange phrase like this, always ask if it just means and. English language has a lot of ways of saying and, notwithstanding the fact that, despite the fact that, etc, etc. So in this case, it just means and, but this is one of those ands that leads off a sentence. So we look for the comma to find the associated marker. So we know that the main connective here is and, and we have two clauses. This clause, which is the not both, and then we have another clause, which is the only shows up if. Well. Let's just do the easy one, which is the not both Sam and Tim can attend the meeting. I'm just going to write the standard form of not both, which is negation with an and in the middle. And Sam can attend the meeting is x, Tim can attend the meeting is w. So you can write xw or wx, it doesn't matter, so I'll write xw. And that is the not both clause. Now, of course, you could write the alternative form if you prefer. And that's fine, but if you do it this way, you must have the brackets around here to preserve our and as the main connective. Next, we have to symbolize Sam only shows up if it isn't raining. So isn't raining, that's just a negation Z. And Sam shows up is Y. So the question here that we need to answer, is this Y arrow negation Z, or is this negation Z arrow Y? So I can block out the only, and it says Sam shows up if it isn't raining out. So that would be if it isn't raining out, uh, then Sam shows up. That's this one. But with the only, uh, I actually end up crossing this one off, and it's got to be this one. So it's really helpful to uh, sort of say it out loud to yourself, and then you can sort of identify. So the full answer is one of these two and y arrow not z, but of course, I would need to put this in brackets to make it so that the and is still the main connective of the sentence. You can dine at Allo exactly on the condition that you make a reservation, unless you know the chef. Exactly on the condition that, that's a key indicator for a biconditional, so we'll mark that down. Unless, that's an important word, and that's pretty much it. So we have this uh, comma here, which is sort of going to tell us something about the division. Unless is a two-part connective, so we need a left part and the right part. But the comma is sort of telling us that the biconditional stops at the comma. So really, this thing is one part of the unless, and this thing is the second. So I know that unless is in the middle, and then you know the chef is W, and you can dine at Allo exactly on the condition that you make a reservation is S by conditional T. And I'm going to put brackets in there to preserve the unless. Now, the easiest way to symbolize unless is, of course, uh, to use the disjunction. So I'm just going to erase this unless in here, and I'll just write in a big or, and that's OK. But a very natural way to symbolize unless is to say, if not one, then the other. So if it's not the case that you know the chef, you don't know the chef, then uh, S by conditional T, and that sort of makes sense. And you can even do it the other way, S by conditional T, uh, arrow, W. Any of these three would satisfy the unless. Here's a longer one, but it's not so bad. It's just very wordy. 
If exercise and eating healthy are necessary for a long life, then at least one of Ricky, Bill, and Dennis will live long only if a miracle occurs. So I have the if, and that clearly pairs with the then. So I know from the comma usage here that the main connective is just arrow. The first part then says, the antecedent says, exercise and eating healthy are necessary. So that's an important term there for a long life. Necessary introduces the consequent, but uh, I need to know which is the condition here. So the condition is this one because it's this that is necessary. So that's what goes in the consequent. So for a long life, one has a long life, that's R. And then the necessary part is exercise and eating healthy, P and Q. P and Q. Now to preserve this as the main connective and to make a well-formed sentence, I'm going to put brackets around everything in the antecedent, and this is just this entire clause. Now I want to say at least one of this will live long only if a miracle occurs. So there's my only if. Without the only, it would say if miracle. It would say if miracle, then at least one. So that means I know over here it should be reversed because the only reverses the direction. So this should say actually at least one of these, arrow Z. So it's not this way. It's going to be arrow Z. So how do I say at least one of these will live long? Well, this is Ricky will live long is W, then Bill is X, and Dennis is Y. So at least one just means W or X or Y. And of course, I have to throw up brackets here, just like I did on the other side, to preserve this as the main connective, because this arrow is that yellow if-then. Don't be too worried about this at least one. It just means, or literally does mean, at least one. And this allows for, of course, multiple combinations here. So it could be two of them, it could be all three, etc. But at least one is true no matter what. Last question. Unless Belinda neither eats nor drinks, she will give up exactly on the following condition, that she falls only when she is drunk. Okay, what's going on? I don't know. Doesn't matter if you understand the sentence or not. You just need to actually be able to break it down by keywords. So unless, of course, is a disjunction or a conditional, depending on how you look at it. But no matter what, it's a binary connective. So when we open with a binary, we always look for the associated comma, and that will tell us the main break. And of course, that does tell us that unless is the main connective. Now, I can just ignore the rest of the sentence. I'll do the left clause first. Uh, Belinda neither eats nor drinks. And so this is just a nice neither nor, two forms of neither nor. Uh, the easiest form I find is the negation with the or and brackets. So Belinda eats, drinks, eats is P, uh, drinks is Q. And you could have written the alternate form if you prefer. Uh, just remember if you have the alternate form to put the brackets up. She will give up exactly on the following condition. Well, exactly on the following condition, that's just fancy talk for a biconditional. So we just identify the stylistic variants and put them in. Belinda gives up is R, and the condition is she falls only when she is drunk. Again, don't really know what this means, doesn't matter. I open up the bracket and I have R biconditional. That she falls only when she is drunk. So this only when is just another stylistic variant of only if. And so she falls is S and she is drunk is T. So uh, the options here are, is this S arrow T or is this T arrow S? And this is the main question. Well, as always, I ignore the only. This says she falls if she is drunk. That would mean that, that Belinda is drunk is the first one. Oops, I meant to say it's this one. But of course, I uh, that's without the only. So when I put the only back in, it's not this, and it's S arrow T. So what I have here in the second clause is S arrow T. Last thing I need to do is finish up the unless. Notice I still have unless written here. Seeing as I've gone over this a bunch of times, I'm just going to actually just pretend uh, that uh, you're happy with the three forms, and I'm going to replace this with just the disjunction. Of course, you could use the if not one, then the other form, and you would introduce another conditional, and that's perfectly fine.